guess what? Somebody might be trying to hijack your VPN. Okay, so Joe, I understand you've got a story about a vulnerability that allows VPN connection hijacking? Yeah, so it's a, a new, some, some academic research from folks at the University of New Mexico found a Linux Unix vulnerability where you can hijack VPN connections. Um, it, it's, and ultimately inject payloads into VPN tunnels. But the way it works is it's a lot around guessing. So if you can, you know, determine uh, if where a user is connected, uh, potentially from a malicious access point or router, uh, and then you can get the sequence and acknowledgement order and numbers, um, you can insert yourself in the tunnel and start, you know, inserting packets. Um, it's a pretty advanced attack, but the, the real impressive thing to me is how widespread it could be. Um, so all versions of Linux and Unix, um, BSD, Mac OS, iOS, uh, Android operating system, really any OS that allows VPN, um, this is available. And, um, you know, it's, it's something where if the exploit is done properly, your VPN connection isn't as secure as you would expect, right? I mean, the reason to make a VPN connection is to have a secure connection to your work machine or to a sensitive server that, you know, you want to, you know, in, encrypt your, your login and your uh, communications with. So, um, you know, both in the, the level of access and the sensitivity, uh, really significant situation here. Things that you never think would be possible normally, you would think like, who would try that? Why would somebody do this? A research team showed us that actually guessing is sometimes a good approach to being able to compromise security. They were able to at least describe a mechanism by which you could compromise the integrity of a VPN connection. Um, I don't know, Stan, you did a bunch of research. Do you, do you want to maybe get a little more specific on how the exploit works? Uh, yeah, it's actually exactly uh, what you mentioned. I guess at a high level, it's one of those things that you say, this shouldn't be possible. Yeah. <laughs> Who would think of this? Um, but then these researchers basically said, well, uh, I guess it is possible. And the, the way I, I understood it to work is basically the operating system, which this is, um, I guess a Linux variant, uh, like right. BSD, mostly, um, and things that are like BSD. So in the network stack, the way it operates is for certain types of messages, it sends a different re response right. depending on some other state. So let's say I try to ask you a question and you wanna like, for me not to know the answer, you're gonna keep giving me the, the same answer. No, 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 no. But one time I might ask you the question and you will know in your mind that I, what I'm asking you is correct. You might smile while telling me no. Right. So in a way, this is kind of uh, very similar. So um, there's a lot of guessing, but because you, you kind of can check the, and the operating system allows you to check uh, it and gives you different answers basically, depending on where it is, you can actually figure out um, something that's within the tunnel. And the, probably the best use case for something like this is when you go to like a, maybe a cafe and you're using their Wi-Fi and maybe you're not even sure like about that Wi-Fi security, usually you use the VPN yeah. client, uh, one of the standard ones, you connect to a more trusted network and within that trusted network then you make additional connections. So but I guess the complexity is by the fact that you're in that cafe or whatever, you're sort of in a predictable VPN connection, right? You're, uh, I guess you're assuming that no, that VPN connection is like the holy, that's like the best <laughs> VPN, the most secure thing ever. Right. Um, but one thing you might not realize is that you're actually in no man's land, so to speak. You're like in a very dangerous 
bad neighborhood, potentially, you know, if you right. think about this Wi-Fi cafe. And uh, the adversary, technically, is, could potentially be controlling everything about it, including sending you malicious uh, questions to ask you, like, oh, is it, are, are you running this IP address? Is this your IP address? Right, da, da, da. Right. And you're always saying, nope, nope, I don't want to talk to you, I don't want to talk to you. But when he guesses the right IP address, he tells you, uh, still don't want to talk to you, but uh, yeah, you got me. <laughs> right. And so by guessing some of these things, you're eventually able to get, I guess the holy grail uh, is being able to inject something into a TCP stream. So generally, um, that shouldn't be too easy on the internet. It's pretty easy if you're like, if let's say you connect to my Wi-Fi station, it's right. really easy for me to redirect you to wherever I want you to go. Uh, but your VPN connection is supposed to prevent me from doing that. But well, this is like kind of breaking that assumption. Uh, so by doing just a lot of guessing and guessing like the entire four tuple, you know, yeah. they're guessing first of all the IP address that you have within the tunnel. That's the first thing you have to guess. The next thing you have to guess is like what IP address you might be connected to on the back end. So let's say you know you're using, I know you're using like an iOS device. You might be, I know you might be connecting to like um, update servers for um, Apple. Right. So now I know maybe get, can guess these other connections. And now I can just start guessing uh, the source port that you're using. And so now once I guessed all those items, um, then uh, you, you will respond to me and then I have to start guessing your TCP sequence numbers, which are also hard to guess. Right. Uh, but if I'm in line, then I can see what they might be and then from there, um, I'm able to inject my own payloads in there. And there's still a question of, well, what can I get you to do once I'm able to inject something into your TCP stream? Because it's not necessarily straightforward uh, to get you to do something that I want you to do. In fact, even within the tunnel itself, there might be an SSL encrypted connection. Right. So it might be harder for you to inject something to an SSL stream. What you would be able to potentially do, though, is to send a reset and tear down the SSL right. stream, right. tear down the VPK. Right. I mean, at the very least, you no longer have a trusted connection, right? Yes, exactly. So. Yeah. Well, well there are a couple of interesting things that I noted when I was reading the story was that in it didn't seem to show up on most Linux distributions until very recently. And the reason was a change in one of the default settings for the reverse path filtering, which is kind of esoteric. And if you're not a networking guy, you probably don't care that much about it. But until recently, the version of system D that was used on a lot of the current Linux distributions uh, had set reverse path filtering to strict in that it would only respond to a, a packet on the same uh, network interface that, that it that came in on. You'd send the response back out the same one. When they changed this to loose is how this became a possibility because now instead of sending it on the virtual interface inside the tunnel, they could send leak some of the information out over the normal interface. So if you could spoof some traffic, especially if you could take over like the access point or, or be on the same network segment, if you could spoof some traffic, it, then this allowed this exploit to work by leaking some of that data um, out the not through the tunnel, but out directly through the other interface. The other interesting aspect is they suggested that this also would work with IPv6. My question that I haven't worked out for myself, and I haven't probably dug into this as deeply as you have, Stan, but you know, the, the thoughts that come to my mind is, you know, because the address space is so much larger in IPv6, the, the first the first couple of stages trying to guess the the virtual IP inside the tunnel if you allow you know a, a slash 48 or a slash 56 or slash 64 for the tunnel for the you know the virtual network 
that's an awful lot of addresses to to try to be uh, guessing. And so while it's theoretically possible, I'm, I'm wondering about the practicality of it in IPv6. Uh, that was, you know, a couple of the things that got me when I was looking at it. I mean, back to your earlier point, I mean, there are a couple or a few mitigations, you know, listed and it kind of makes sense. Basically, the mitigations are make your VPN connection harder to predict, you know, less easy to guess, right? So if you implement the reverse path filtering in that more strict mode, uh, you can implement Bogon filtering and uh, you could also encrypt packet size and timing. Uh, all those, you know, they're not, probably not the panacea here, but they're going to make it just that much harder per, to predict these parameters of your session. So, um, yeah, but, the, the part of the, that might be a little bit harder that would require actually modifying the VPN software as opposed to just a setting in the in the TCP stack is the, is the timing or the size of the packets. To, to do that, you'd have to have the VPN software padding out the, the packets, um, you know, maybe out to full MTU size or something. And what kind of impact is that going to have on on the network? I don't know. Uh, the, the, the obviously the first one, the reverse path filtering, is relatively easy to to turn that back on. Right since that was the default until recently. But some of these others are going to require some thought as to how you can really mitigate it and maybe, as I said, the, the VPN software itself, whether it be you know, IPsec, that's, that's actually kind of built into the network stack, so you need to make some changes there, or some of the other ones, OpenVPN and WireGuard are two that were mentioned in the in the uh, advisory in the story. Yeah, I mean, the end of the story is a little bit shrouded in, in mystery. You know, the, the people who released the, the information, the research, they, they said they're planning to uh, release more technical details. And I think probably any kind of patching or, or response probably is waiting on that. So um, I expect, you know, more to come with the exact details of how this works but um, you know so far the researchers just said they're they're working on their white paper so let's see you can try using VPN you can try using authentication technologies SSL and things like that to protect yourself but you should know that if you don't control the access point that somebody might be able to um, lessen your security.